Hey, this is Joe Gray Bench Electronics. Welcome back to the Pedal Teardown Series where I take apart new and interesting pedals and show you what's going on inside. Today we have the Analog Man Sunface. Okay, Analog Man Sunface. Uh, doesn't need much of an introduction to anyone familiar with uh, Boutique, Fuzzface, remakes or clones. Uh, Sunface, of course, is not a direct clone. We'll look at the schematic later. Uh, but it is uh, unquestionably inspired by, uh, and you know, this isn't hidden by Analog Man or anything, it is heavily inspired by the Fuzz Face. Analog Man offers a ton of features on these uh, pedals. You can really get them customized the way you want to use the pedal. Uh, this version I have is a, a feature packed one. I wanted to find one like that so you could look at the different ways Analog Man incorporates those features. So, going over the layout and controls of this pedal, we have volume and fuzz. You're going to find that on almost every fuzz face out there, clone or not. Uh, this sun face also has the uh, bias control, which Analog Man calls the sundial. It is a, uh, a, a variable resistance on the collector of Q2. The version I have here also has a LED, an indication LED. Uh, recall that the original fuzz faces did not have a indicator LED. It only has a double pole, double throw foot switch. Of course, the Sunface here uses a triple pole double throw foot switch, which is a sort of a relatively modern invention. So LED uh, can be included on modern fuzz faces. Fuzz control also has the on off switch here, uh, which if you wind the fuzz control all the way down, it cuts power to the entire pedal. This is mostly used to preserve battery power in your battery if you're powering the pedal that way. Um, so you can, instead of just unplugging your input jack to break that ground connection for the battery snap, you just wind the fuzz pot all the way down and that kills power to the pedal no matter what, even even your DC jack, it's it's power off no matter what. The pedal here is also built in the 125B size enclosure. Analog Man does it in either the fifth smaller 1590B or this 125B enclosure, with the caveat that uh, you can get top mounted jacks in either enclosure, but if you want the fuzz on or off pot, it's too deep, and so they can't do top mounted jacks and the on or off pot. So if you want both of those, top mounted jacks and the fuzz on or off pot, you have to get the 125B size. I prefer this size anyway, so I would have gotten this even if I didn't get the fuzz pot. Uh, and I did get this pedal used, I didn't get it from Analog Man, uh, but the person who got it, that's what they had to do. You may have looked at Sunfaces uh, for sale online. Uh, they do get quite expensive and that all depends on the type of transistor that it's in the pedal. Uh, this one is one of the more expensive ones uh, with the NKT red dot transistors. Uh, as far as other features on the pedal, Standard latching foot switch, DC jack on the side down here. Pretty typical sort of satin gold uh, sparkle enclosure. Analog man logos and stamps. Usually it's a, a sort of a stylized sun face, uh, but the original orderer of this pedal opted for the clock graphic. And on the bottom there is the stamped analog man logo. And of course we have the MXR style knobs. All right, that is it for the exterior. Let's go ahead and crack open the pedal. So I usually take the pedal fully apart, pull the guts out of the enclosure. However, in this case, there is a plastic standoff here that is adhered to the back of the sundial pot. Uh, and if I pull that off, I'm worried it's gonna mess up the foam and it's not gonna restick and I don't have replacements for that standoff. So we're gonna leave the guts in the enclosure. We can see most everything we need to see anyway. So here is the interior of the Analog Man Sunface. Just pointing out the components, if anyone's not familiar with the fuzz face circuit, it's a very simple circuit. We have three fixed resistors here. We have our input cap. Uh, this is one of the, maybe the most important circuit change between a sun face and a fuzz face, which is a smaller input cap, one microfarad. 22 microfarad uh, emitter bypass cap for these Q2. We have two trim pots here. This white pot up here is the input resistance pot. Uh, and it is a, a variable resistance right at the input of the pedal, and it will somewhat simulate t the turning down of your guitar volume. If for some reason you're unable to do that or, or wanted to just a fixed position and not have to worry about your guitar volume, you can set it here on the pedal. The lower black trimmer here, this is sort of a range control for the sundial knob. It sort of affects how the, the, the throw of the sundial and also allows the center of the sundial uh, which I should mention, this is a, a center detented pot. So right in the center, it will click into place. And according to Analog Man, the center of that pot is set by this trim pot so that the Q2 collector reads about five volts at that position. So that's the purpose of that trim pot. And then of course we have the transistors. According to the enclosure out here, these are the NKT red dot transistors. 
Uh, there are handwritten markings on the top. This here is Q2, and this upper one here is Q1. The markings appear to be like a K, and then a, a, a cursive D or a 2 with a line underneath. Doesn't mean anything to me. Now, allegedly from Analog Man, these transistors were just a, a house number marked uh, new market transistor, uh, but they uh, allegedly sound the same as the NKT-275s. I've never played a fuzz face with the NKT-275, so I can't really attest to that. Uh, there is a very faint, I don't even know if you'll be able to see that, very faint markings on there. You can make out NKT, and then yeah, I see M and then some numbers, which is not any standardized designation for uh, geranium transistors that I know. And then it's hard to see on this one, but I can see the M under there and then NKT across the top. But again, that house number doesn't mean anything. And as far as fuzz phase values, we have the 100K feedback resistor, totally normal value. Over here is a 513-51K. That is most likely the, uh, that's gonna be the collector resistor for Q1. This resistor here is the 680 ohm. That's, it's taking the place of the typically 470 ohm, which is sort of the top half of that voltage or resistance divider for the collector of Q2. Uh, and then it branches off there to the output cap and to the uh, top, the black trimmer here, which is the that range control from the sundial. And then of course that goes down to collector of Q2. Output cap here is, let me see if you can see that, yeah. 10 nanofarad, which is the standard fuzz face value. You can see our potentiometers down there. This is the volume control, which can't see it on this pop, but we know it's a 500K audio potentiometer. Fuzz pot over here should be the 1K reverse audio pot with the switch. And the sundial down here, uh, I'll have to double check the value. We're gonna look at the schematic in a second, so we'll check and see what the sundial value is. Standard blue three pole double throw foot switch, standard Kobe Con style DC jack, standard battery snap, Input and output jacks are the open frame switchcraft jacks. Stereo jack, of course, for the input because we need to be able to switch the uh, positive lead from the battery on and off to preserve power. Of course, in this case, it's not so important because you have that fuzz on and off control. Um, but I suppose for anyone who's not familiar with that or is just used to unplugging their input, it's still worthwhile to do the stereo jack. All right, let's test for some voltages. Uh, so we have PMP transistors, and we don't have any type of voltage regulator or voltage inverter on our PCB, which means we are running positive ground for this fuzz phase. Uh, that means we're gonna connect the positive lead of our multimeter to ground, and then we're gonna probe with our negative lead. That way our multimeter shows positive voltages on the screen. So most important voltage uh, for a fuzz phase is going to be the collective voltages of Q2. That's what the sun dial controls. Uh, we can come in here and look at that. So we're at 5.28 volts. Let's check our sundial. Yeah, our sundial was right at that center detent. So Analog Man says they want about five volts in the collector. And we're reading about 5.2 volts, which is totally normal. Uh, battery might be a little bit higher than nine volts, typical for a newer battery. So that could explain the, the slight discrepancy there. We can also check the collector of Q1. See what that voltage is coming up. And that's reading 0.452, which is interesting. Usually the collector voltage of fuzz face is said to want to be around 0.7 volts. Uh, so a little bit lower from analog man there. Uh, that jives with the larger collector resistor we see here at 51K. Usually for fuzz face is 33K. Uh, so there must be a, a conscious choice there to use a higher collector resistance, which means we're gonna drop more voltage across this resistor, which is gonna drop the collector voltage. Uh, so that must be a conscious choice from analog man there. Um, so put that as number two of the uh, obvious changes from a fuzz face. We got the one microfarad input cap and now an increased Q1 collector resistor. And then of course we can modify or play with that collector voltage on Q2 and I'll demonstrate that here. Let me just pop in a different probe. So let's just grab onto the collector here. So that's our collector of Q2. I can just come in here and adjust that sundial and you can see we can adjust that collector voltage up or down just by manipulating that sundial. And we can go in this case all the way from 7.1 volts all the way down to 3.3 volts. So that range control, that black trim pot, is going to adjust uh, the how far that sundial can sweep left or right uh, and also allows the center of the sundial to sit right at that approximately 5 volt mark. So as far as build quality of the sun face here, I would say it's decent. 
Uh, I don't see any solder pads or anything where it's missing too much solder or it's, or it's really balled up and bad. Um, a couple things I don't like. Uh, I'm not crazy about this mounting method with the standoff and this plastic, uh, the plastic standoff here that's just uh, stuck on with foam adhesive to the back of the sundial pot. Uh, that adhesive is going to give way at some point, you know, with repeated, if you take this out and you're playing on stage or whatever, it's gonna get hot, that adhesive is eventually going to wear down and not stick too much. And then this board's just kinda gonna be flapping in the breeze. Um, not crazy about that, that mounting method. Um, there are other ways to do it, obviously. If you get PCB mount pots with the right angle legs, then you can fly the board up over stuff and, and, that, and that connection's much more solid. Uh, I'm also not crazy about the way the black lead here which i believe is the wire uh, for the led uh, it's just sort of tacked onto the 51k resistor here it doesn't have like a dedicated through hole of its own uh, and that's just sending power to the led which is fine it makes sense uh, we need to get power to the led but it'd be nice if it had its own through hole and it wasn't just sort of it looks a little bodgy where it's just kind of tacked under the leg of this um, resistor here um, I say that, but in full disclosure, that is exactly what I did for that um, sort of salvage fuzz face that I built. Um, but that, but I hope in that video I acknowledge that that was sort of a, a hokey thing to do. And of course, um, you know, it's, it's still hokey in this context as well. Um, other than that, the components are, you know, obviously mojo, mojo components, no doubt, but they're good quality components. The trim pots are good quality, Panasonic, uh, Capacitors here, these are gonna be those Phillips capacitors. Um, these are old, using old electrolytics is kind of, I mean, it's probably okay if they're new old stock, but you know, they're kind of old and they do have a sort of a liquid solution uh, that does dry up over time. Uh, and then old transistors, there's not really any way to get around that. Old germanium is old germanium. Not many people making germanium these days. Uh, and then of course, the battery snap, Kobecon, that's all pretty stock centered. I do like the switch grip jacks. The pots, I think these are the, TT pots, or maybe not. They look like alpha 16 mil pots. The switch, I think is a great idea. Um, I also don't like having to plug in and out input jacks because I, I just forget. Um, but it is maybe nice to cut the power for the geraniums just to extend, you know, we're, for any geranium pedals, we're sort of on borrowed time. So um, I think, you know, that's not such a bad idea just to wind the pot down. All right, so I actually had a hard time finding a Sunface schematic, so I just drew it up real quick. So here is this pedal in schematic form. Uh, so we have our input here. We go right through the, the white trim pot here, the input trim pot. It's just a variable resistor on the input. Uh, like I said, this is going to sort of mimic the effect of rolling down your guitar volume, uh, but you can do it just as a sort of set and forget here if you just want that sound out of your fuzz face. So you can just set it and then leave it that way and then you don't have to worry about manipulating your guitar volume. This is probably the biggest sonic change to the pedal uh, for being a sun face versus just a regular fuzz face, dropping the input caps with one microfarad. That's gonna change the, uh, the low end cutoff. So you're gonna lose more low end. Uh, the fuzz face is a pretty bass heavy pedal, especially if your amp can put that out. You'll know if you play a more powerful amp with a fuzz face, it gets really, it can get really muddy. Um, so this is gonna help tighten that up. I think that's a, I like that mod. I think it's a good thing. Most everything else here is standard fuzz face. Of course, we have the increased collector resistance for Q2, or excuse me, Q1, which yields a smaller uh, Q1 collector voltage. Uh, this is just going to be, like I said, a sonic choice from analog band, which is fine. A little bit larger resistor up here, 680K versus 470K for a standard fuzz face. And then we have the two uh, collector resistances. The 5K is going to be the trim pot, or sort of like range pot, this uh, black trim pot here. And then the 10K is gonna be the sundial. And then coming out here, this is just standard fuzz face, 1K pot. I'm not certain if it's a reverse log pot, I didn't pull it out, uh, but it usually is. 22 microfarad emitter bypass capacitor. That's of course the second electrolytic here. And 100K feedback resistor. And then of course we have a 10 nanofarad film cap output. And I think I said 500K volume pot before it's a 250K audio pot. And then out. So more or less pretty standard fuzz face. Uh, the reduced input cap and a couple other features uh, like the sundial, getting the sundial right, and the input resistance give some more usability to the fuzz face. But all in all, pretty standard. So yeah, there is the Analog Man Sunface. This is the NKT Red Dot version. Let's go ahead and 
usually I say put the pedal back together, but let's just go put the back door back on. All right, that is a wrap on the Analog Man Sunface Teardown. If you have any questions or recommendations for a pedal you want to see on a future Teardown episode, let me know in the comments. Uh, as always, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribing and hit the notification bell if you want to know when I make a new video. I'm Joe from Gray Bench Electronics. Thank you for watching.